الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت عليم حكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما أمسينا لفطرة الإسلام وعلى كلمة الإخلاص وعلى دين النبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى ملة أبينا إبراهيم حنيفا مسلما وما كان من المشركين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته صلى الله عليه وسلم just want to give a you know الحمد لله a little bit a short reminder yeah, because the month of Ramadan is coming up and as Muslims as Mu'min we should start preparing for Ramadan you know as we enter this blessed month of Ramadan it is important to reflect upon the significance of self-discipline right self-discipline is the foundation of success you know in Ramadan it is a month of immense blessing you know it is a month of mercy it is a, it is a month in which the doors of paradise is open and the gates of the hellfire is closed as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said idha jaa ramadan if ramadan come futiyat abwab al jannah the gates of jannah is open wa ghulqat abwab an nar and the, the the hellfire the gates of the hellfire is closed wa sufidat al shayatin and shaitan is locked up and shaitan is locked up so it is a month that we need to self -re reflect you know it is a month of self reflection and self improvement and so with us humans we tend to blame others right we point fingers all the time at others we never tend to point fingers at us fall asleep right it's not shaitan it's you you have to blame yourself first before you blame anything else so this is the problem with the ummah today they're so busy pointing fingers at other people or pointing at, at, at other things or shaitan and blaming shaitan and they're not blaming themselves and this is why we we are not successful in the things that we do so, so you know and so so we have to here in this month we have to uh, you know in, we have to strive to attain the taqwa, right? This is our goal, is to attain, uh, attain taqwa, or, or consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by performing different ibadats, fasting, reading Quran, as-salah, you know, tahajjud, and things like that, doing good deeds, sadaqah, being kind to people, feeding people, these are all good deeds that we have to start focusing on right now, not just uh, in Ramadan. So, the, but the problem is that the, the, it, what's overlooked is the discipline, the self-discipline. You know, we're not looking at how to gain success, right? So, so the topic of this lecture is pretty much self-discipline. And what is self-discipline? Self-discipline is the ability to control yourself, your one's behavior. You can control your own behavior and your own emotions, right? In order to achieve a certain goal. This is what self-discipline is. You have to do, control your, 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 your anger, you have to control your behavior, your emotions, so you can achieve what you, your goal. So in the case of Ramadan, our goal is a taqwa As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, O you who believe, the fasting was prescribed on you. As if it was prescribed on those before you. So that you may have taqwa. So this is the whole purpose of Ramadan is to have this, to attain this piety. And this is the ultimate success is to have this taqwa. Once we have this taqwa, then we can could, we could say we're successful. But very little achieve this taqwa. Very little people are able to achieve this taqwa. Maybe in the first day of Ramadan, mashallah, everybody's strong. They come, they are fasting, and they come to away. You know, early they're in front of everybody. You know, it's maghrib time, and they pray maghrib, and they come straight to the masjid the first day of Ramadan. And then later on, the weeks later, 
they delay and delay until Tarawih is praying and they're, they're after two or three rakats, then they're in the Tarawih. But this is how it is. And I, I kid you not, this is what a lot of people go through, including myself. You know, in the beginning of Ramadan, we have all this energy, but at the end, we tend to lose the energy. And why? Because we do not have the self-discipline to keep this energy. So success, you have to understand, success is not given. It's not given to you. Success is earned. Success is earned and is earned by hard work and perseverance. Yourself in Ramadan, so you have to blame yourself for your, your, your behavior. You know, if you look at the success of um, the, the non-Muslims, right? How were they successful? Like, for example, probably if you guys like know basketball, right? Basketball. I personally think one of the most uh, successful persons that was that played basketball was Kobe Bryant, right? Kobe Bryant. He was very successful in what he did. You know how how many? I think he won like five championships, right? And he was and the he last was one to leave practice. And he, when he practiced, he would, practice, he would do practice harder than he would do in the games. He would try harder in the games. And not only that, when he practiced on his own, he's waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Practicing at 3 o'clock in the morning. Getting in one practice. And then he goes to uh, take his uh, breakfast and, and then he gets another practice. So he, in between, before, between three and nine, he already has two practices. The rest of the players, you know, mashallah, they're success. They think they're successful, but they're waking up at nine and starting their practice. But Kobe Bryant, he has started two practices already. So by the end of the day, he has like four or five practices where the rest of the players... This, he was doing this throughout his whole career. And this is called self-discipline. Right? right, and Kobe Bryant, he, he looked, he was mentally strong. You know, he was not weak. That's why they they call him the Mamba mentality, right? He was mentally strong. He didn't like any. He didn't let anything break him down, because if he gets to, if he fixes the little things, then the big things will become easy. Today, we are not focusing on the little things. The everyday things that we are doing, like the small things, waking up, the dua of waking up, Alhamdulillah, right when you wake up, do, are you saying this dua? When you're going to the bathroom, are you saying the dua? When you're putting stuff in your mouth, are you saying these little things we must perfect first before we get to the big things? If we cannot perfect these little things every day, then fasting is going to be hard for us. We're not going to be successful. Yes, you can do it, but you won't be successful in it. Yes, we can fast month of Ramadan, okay, but it's not going to be successful. So this is what we have to work on is the small things, perfecting the small things that are around us, praying our sunnahs daily and everything. This is what's going to give, give us success. So that's just a small example of a, a non-Muslim, you know. But alhamdulillah for us, we, 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 you know, we are Muslims. We should be above these people because they learn from the Muslims, right? So this, up, this upcoming month, as a Muslim, in order to, to attain that success in Ramadan, we need to first exercise our self-discipline. We need to check ourselves first. Right, self so, in several areas, and I'll, I will just point out a few areas that I think that is important. Okay, the first, in order to achieve success in Ramadan, we must clear out our hearts, clear out everything from your heart, and and fix our intentions. This is the most important thing in anything that you do. And this is why the most important hadith is al-a'malu bin-niyat, hadith of Umar radiallahu anhu. It's the first hadith in almost every hadith book because of how important it is. So fix your attention, uh, fix your intention. Ask yourself what you hope to achieve this Ramadan. 
What's your goal this Ramadan? Right? What, what are you trying to achieve during this Ramadan? What are you trying to improve? How are you trying to improve this Ramadan? How are you going to get closer to Allah this Ramadan? Right? Start. You know, and throughout the years, we're, we're faced with so many. How are we going to change or act towards others? You know? Whatever intentions that you have this Ramadan, start preparing it for right now. Mental, right? You, you got to be mentally strong. If you're not mentally strong, you're going to break down. And you're not going to be successful in what you do. Yes, you're going to finish Ramadan, but you're going to finish Ramadan and it's just going to go away. Success in Ramadan is what you do after. Right? Not in Ramadan. Is what comes afterwards. This is what will show your success. So in Ramadan, you're praying Tarawih, you're praying, you're reading the Quran, you're finishing the Quran, you're praying Qiyam al Layl. Afterwards, if you're doing the same thing, this is success. But after Ramadan, if we stop everything, your Ramadan is a failure. It's a failure. So, so our success is not what we do in Ramadan. It's our actions that comes after Ramadan. That will show you how successful you are in Ramadan. So fix the first thing, as we said, fix our intentions. No matter what you do, you fix your intentions. Clarify what you want to do. Plan it out now. You know, this is the step to success. One of the things to success, you, what are you planning to do? What do you want to do? What are your goals? You know, there are prayers. There are fasting, right? There are the, the, the gates of Jannah, right? Eight gates of Jannah. Fasting, prayer, dhikr, and things like this, right? If you can't go in all eight, then I always advise focus on one gate. With your women in Ramadan, this is a part of controlling your desires. We have to control and discipline our desires. So this is a problem because it can be very challenging depending on your surroundings and who you are around. Right? right? If you're around good people with taqwa, it's going to be easy for you to control your desires because if something pops up in your head or something, you're doing something, that person who fears Allah is going to remind you to stay away from these things. But if you're not around a person of taqwa, then you could be sneaking and going to eat a slice of pizza, right? In Ramadan. Oh, nobody sees me. I'm just going to eat and then... You know, you know, this is what this is what children do. I mean, this is, when I was young, you know, children, I used to do this. You know, <laughs> saying I'm fasting but hiding and eating somewhere else. You know, and this is just this is just insane. You know, because we're so busy following our desires. So this this is something that we have to control, and we have to remind ourselves that we are fasting, not just from food. From the, uh, mentally, you were fasting our st from the food, right? And, and from our desires, our sexual desires, and from our, 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 our words that comes out of our mouth, how we speak to people, how we treat people. This is, we have to control that. We have to fast from all these things. Because you cannot just get angry for nothing. Like usual, you know? So this is the second thing that we have to focus on in Ramadan is that controlling our desires. The third thing is that we have to control uh, as, uh, our behavior, our speech, you know, how we interact with people. Many times, or all of us, we get into this problem. Our tongues, right? Our tongues is what kills us because we are very arrogant we are ar very arrogant and this arrogance leads us to backbiting another person all of us we have backbitten someone before you know some of us may do it more than others but we all fall into this trap so in Ramadan we have to protect ourselves our tongue we have to protect ourselves, our, our tongue, because these things, backbiting, lying. Some of us, we lie so much, it's like water coming out of, you know? Like a father, it's so easy now, lying. You know? 
and, and, and gossiping and you know and all these things this is what we have to focus we have to discipline ourselves our tongues or else our Ramadan is going to be a failure you know if you don't if you don't leave these things then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no need to accept your fasting as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said so this is something that we have to focus. If we see ourselves gossiping a lot or talking a lot, talking nonsense, you know, just talking stuff that doesn't mean anything, but we're just talking, let's cut down in them. If we see ourselves always backbiting or talking about other people, let's try to focus on cutting that out of our system. Right. Another area that we should focus on is um, we need to extra, uh, be self-disciplined in um, time management. Manage your time correctly. Right? And this is, if you read books on success and everything, how to be successful, this is one of the big things. Is that managing our time. You know, in Ramadan, as you know, it's... Um, Prayer is a part of it. Taraweeh is a part of Ramadan, right? Qiyam al-Layl is a part of Ramadan. But sometimes we do not manage our time correctly. You know, we waste time doing other things. Like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Al-Barakah fi bukur ummati. Right? The Barakah is in the mornings of our ummah. The morning of the uh, uh, the mornings. This is where the barakah of the ummah is. But a lot of times, we spend our nights doing things, wasting, and then we're up until one or two o'clock. And then when it comes to morning, we're so tired, we can barely wake up to pray fajr. And then right after fajr, we go to sleep. But this after fajr is when all the barakah is. But because we stayed up all night, we're all tired for that. So you look at the Bufar, they are up early. Like, you know, in the stock markets right now, right? The stock markets in the East Coast, they're they're three hours ahead of us. So the Bufar, they're waking up, you know, three o'clock in the morning, getting ready for the stock market. It takes discipline for that. Because that's where all the barakah is. So we, as Muslims, we have to manage our time correctly. You know, if, if, if you know, sitting with a friend uh, late at night is not going to benefit you, use it in the morning, you know? Use, go to sleep early so you can have enough rest, wake up for fajr, feel fresh, and then do what you were doing at night. Like, let's say if you have a paper to do. You have a paper due next day or something like mid Zuhur or something like that, right? You have, you're in school, you have a paper due Zuhur time next day. Some people, they'll stay up all night. And then they will sleep and then they will turn in their paper the next day. But if they go to sleep early and they wake up and they do their paper in the early mornings, Allah, they will, be, they will have more barakah. Rather than staying up all night and doing the paper, if they spend their, if they do, they, they manage their time correctly, they sleep early, and then they wake up, pray qiyam a little bit, just pray a few, you know, uh, a couple of rak'ats or something like that, pray fajr, and, and do whatever you have to do during that time in the morning. You will have more barakah in that time because this is where the barakah of the ummah is, is in the morning. So this Ramadan, we have to manage our time. As you know, Seattle is very hard. You know, alhamdulillah, right now, it's not too bad, right? right, 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 right. But before, you know, Isha comes in at 11, 11.30, you have to pray Tzara away, and then for one, two hours, then Qiyam right there, you have no time. So thus, we had to manage our time. So our whole day will be full of energy, right? Sometimes we don't manage it correctly and we're, the next day we can't function correctly. You know, when we go to work, we can't function and things like that. Our, our whole day is ruined because we are not managing our time correctly. So this is something, one of the ways to success is time management. Right? Know when you're going to start the fasting, you know. This is the most important thing. When does fasting, the, the suhoor comes in? 
When does the, the Fajr comes in? When, when do I have to break my, uh, begin my fast? When does Suhoor, you know, when do I have to end my Suhoor? Right? And then look, when, when is, when is, uh, when is Maghrib time? When, when do I have to break my fast? When is Dhuhr time? When is Asr time? And things like this. So you can schedule what you want to do. Every day there should be a schedule. Right? There is like, like, like some of, the, some of the, the, the successful people, like the, the, the Elon Musk and the Bezos and things like this, they schedule their time. Like Sundays, they'll make a schedule for the whole week, what they're doing, and they'll implement the schedule. This is why they're so successful. From the beginning of the Sunday, they start scheduling what they're going to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then they'll implement their skills. So this is what we have to do. And once you're scheduling, it's so much easier, you know, for those who teach, right? MashaAllah, we have all this knowledge, like, oh, I've been teaching for so long, you know, with all this knowledge and everything. I think I'm a bad, I think I'm bad, MashaAllah. I, I know this thing, but I know this, I teach this for so long. But it's still hard. It's easy when I schedule up my time. I'm going to teach this to this grade. I'm going to teach this today. Monday, I'm going to teach this. I'm going to teach this. It makes my life so much easier. But if I just go on the whim, just, oh, okay, I'm just going to, you know, it's going to come out of my head. I know this. I, just, it's, I'm, I don't feel good. But when I schedule something, I prepare, it makes everything so much easier. So Ramadan, this is what we have to start to do. Prepare for it right now. What's your plan in Ramadan? Let's start preparing right now. Because we only have about two weeks until Ramadan. Right. Another thing is um, work on perfecting our actions. Work on perfecting our actions. Everything we do, we should try to perfect it. Right? And not overlook like we were talking about how Kobe Bryant, right? He was, he was a perfectionist. So don't overlook the small things. Right? Don't overlook the small things. This is why you see in the army and everything like this, in the army, the first thing they're told to do in the army, right when they wake up, they have to fix their bed. Us, we don't care about our bed, right? We just go and just leave. But then the army, they're very strict. You have to fix your bed. You have to do your bed. And then you have to do this. You have to wear a certain type of clothes. You have to swear. And this is why they are so strong. Right? They're very disciplined. So us, we have to be perfectionists. In everything that happens, when we pray, let's try to perfect our prayers. And this is what the Prophet is teaching us. When the Prophet was asked by Jibril, you know, uh, uh, he says, Ihsan. What is Ihsan, right? What is Ihsan? The Prophet said, An ta'budullah ka anha, an ta'budullah ka anha ka tarahu, fa innahu, fa illam tarahu, fa innahu yarak. Worship Allah as if He sees you, right? And no, I mean, as if you see Allah. I mean, and know that you're not going to see Allah, but know that He sees you. Right? If here, you know, like little children, right? When they're praying by themselves, Allah, Allah, they're praying real fast, right? It's just like this. When we're praying at home, we're praying real fast. But when we come to the masjid, Allah, we got all this khusus, right? We pray differently when we're at the masjid and at home. All of us, we go through this. At home, we just want to finish our prayers. But here, mashallah, we were very patient. Let's wait for the imam. I want to read nice, recite, and everything like this. But at home, we pray fast. So uh, if, if we perfect things, we should act like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us all the time. If Allah was watching us, I'm pretty sure we were going to try to perfect our prayers from, from the beginning to the end, you know? So this is what a Muslim should be. He should be a perfectionist. When he's doing ibadah, not just I'm gonna pray like you know sometimes you know what, what a lot of us make the mistake of like when it's time to pray and we're busy talking I'm talking to Yaqub right on the phone Yaqub and we're talking we're talking that oh oh dang I, I didn't pray Dhuhr yet let me pray real quick how do you pray real quick you know you can't pray real quick because this is ibadah you should never say those things. 
Because when you say those things mentally, it messes you up. Never use those words. Oh, let me pray real quick. Let me finish, finish my salah real quick. Because mentally, it will mess you up. And later on, you will see that the prayer is not going to mean anything to you anymore. So we need to perfect our prayers. Perfect everything that we do from the time that we wake up. Looking at the smallest things, right? Looking at the smallest things. And I think my time is up, right? <laughs> Shaykh Abdullah. Shaykh Abdullah is probably outside waiting. So, so inshallah, I will end it. And, you know, there is some of the other points, but, you know, another point, you know, I'll end it with, the, with, with this final point is that self determined discipline is not a one time effort, it's continuous. It's not a one time thing, right? And it, 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 there's a process. To the, to the discipline, discipline. right? And, and this, this is like how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the Hadith, "Ahabu amana ilallah adwamuha wa in qalb." The most beloved actions to Allah is that which is continuous, even if it's small, the small actions. Right? Let's like say a person gives, he has a lot of money, he gives ten thousand dollars. Five years later, he gives another ten thousand dollars. This is, you know, yes, mashallah, he'll get the reward for that. But if he gave a dollar a day every day, wallahi, this is a lot better. Because it's small and it's continuous. These are the small ones, these continuous acts that's going to make us successful. Not, not, you know, sometimes you get, uh, you, you feel like, mashallah, you have iman. So you wait, pray, up and Allahu Akbar. You're praying three, three hours of qiyam al right? Then three months later, you don't pray anything at all. <laughs> is that good? No. What's better is that let's just, you just pray two. Something that's continuous. Even though it is a little. Right? Even though it is a little. This is the stuff that we have to focus on. To make us better. And remember, the success is not in Ramadan. Whatever you do this Ramadan, don't say you're successful because of it. Even if you, if you finish the Qur'an ten times, you're praying Qiyam al-Layl every day, that's not success. Success comes after Ramadan. What are you going to be like after Ramadan? Right? It's easy right now, Ramadan is easy because everybody is doing it. You have no choice, you come to the masjid, you have to pray Tirawah, you have to pray Qiyam al-Layl. So it's easy when everybody is doing it, right? But when you're the ghuraba, when you're the gharib, you're the stranger, that's when it's hard. Right? This is what the Prophet said, Tuba li ghuraba, you know, uh, 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 glad tidings for the ghuraba, for the stranger. You have to be that stranger after Ramadan. When everybody is leaving Taraway or Qiyam al you continue to do Qiyam al when everybody, everybody stops fasting, fasting, you continue to fast Mondays, Thursdays, 13th, 14th, and 15th. When everybody stops reading the Quran, you continue to finish the Quran in the month of Ramadan, or every month. And this is success. This is success. And remember, it takes discipline for this. Discipline. You have to train yourself from now. Not just wait Ramadan, because if you wait until Ramadan, yes, you're going to mess around the first couple of days of Ramadan, you're going to be strong. You know, some of us will finish a lot in Ramadan the first week. The first week. Second week, you're going to be doing less. Third week, you're going to be doing less. By the fourth week, you're going to be doing what you were doing before Ramadan. So these are some of the tips, you know, these are some of the, the, the tips that, that uh, hopefully that it will benefit us, right? Hopefully it will benefit, benefit uh, us and you know in this upcoming Ramadan and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us success in this Ramadan and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we reach Ramadan because we're not guaranteed to reach Ramadan. SubhanAllah. This 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 month alone I pray like six janazas. It's crazy, there's just death all over them, you know? So don't think that you're gonna make Ramadan. That's why you start right now. Right. right. Tomorrow's Monday. Let's all fast Mondays. 
Thursdays, let's all fast Thursdays. If you can fast every other day, let's fast every other day. Start right now because you do not know if you're going to make it to Ramadan. Even this is two weeks from now. Right? So don't wait. This is our time. You know, before, before Allah subhanahu wa takes it uh, away from you, let's just start today. Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Inshallah, Sheikh Dabari is here, right?